to everybody what your idea of a Christian is. Because in your lecture, you referred to the Reverend Jim Jones, implying that he was a reverend, implying that he was a Christian. When you refer to people of different uh, denominations, like the Anglican and the DRC and so on, you are implying to all these folk that they are Christians. But I just would like to tell you what a Christian is. A Christian is a person not in a denomination. Christian. Not necessarily in a denomination, let me put it to you that way. I would also like to tell you that the Christian of 1984 today condemns the deeds of the Reverend Jim Jones outright. And I would like to tell you that a Christian is one that's repented of their sins and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord and is making every effort to walk in His way and, empl uh, and employing His will in their lives. Sorry, can we, can we come back yes. to your question? Let's repeat your question. Yeah. No, no, I think I understood. Right. You see, the, the question was about who is a Christian. According to the definition given, it says the Christian is not supposed to belong to any denomination. That's what our brother said, no denomination. So the Roman Catholics, numbering some 700 million among the, the so-called Christians now, he won't accept them. That means they are not Christians. The DRC belongs to a denomination. The Dutch Reformed Church is supposed to belong to a denomination. So they are not Christians. He said, if they don't belong to any denomination. The Jehovah's Witnesses are not Christians. The Seventh-day Adventists are not Christians. The Christadelphians are not Christians. So I want to know, Lucy, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not that intolerant. If you tell me that you are a Christian, I accept you. Never mind what label you apply on yourself. Whatever label you give is not my business. You say you're a Christian, you accept this Bible as your book of authority, you said, yes, I can talk to you. Whether you are a Jehovah's Witness, whether you are a Seventh-day Adventist, whether you are a Mormon, whatever you are, if you say you are a Christian, as far as I'm concerned, I will treat you as a Christian. Uh, may I answer you on this now? Not answer. I want you to now contradict me to say that these people, the Dutch Reformed Church, are not Christians. No, I did according not. According to your definition. No, you're putting words in my mouth, sir. I said to you that a Christian does not necessarily belong to any denomination. But now I gave these, you, I've already given you my no, no, right. But, but you say now these, the Roman Catholics, are they Christians? A Roman Catholic who has committed his life to Jesus Christ and repented of his sins can be a Christian. I'm not here to condemn anybody. I'm here to say my definition of a Christian as the Bible uh, describes what a person must do to become a Christian. That is what the Jehovah's Witness say. No, that the, no, that's that not what they, they say. say that you are not a Christian. They say you are a pagan. I'm not saying that. The Jehovah's Witness say you are a Trinitarian, and as such you are a worshipper of three gods. Is, am I right? That's what the Jehovah's Witness say about well, you. I'm not here to answer for what the Jehovah's Witness is no, saying about me. No, but now look, me. they tell me that you are not a Christian. Am I to accept their words against yours? You must read the Bible and see what the Bible says about a Christian. But look, the Jehovah's Witness, they are very great readers of the Bible. They read the Bible more than any other sect or denomination. Yes, but which Bible do they read? A big one? They've printed their own Bible. Right. But right. I'm not here to discuss what the, uh, uh, so, I mean, the Jehovah's Witness So will you, will you not accept them as Christians? If a Jehovah's Witness comes to repentance and accepts Jesus Christ into his life, then he is a Christian. Well, that's what he claims. So if they claim what you are claiming for yourself. And that is my definition of a Christian. Right. To me, you say you are a Christian, I accept you. That other guy says he's a Christian. Whoever says he's a Christian, as far as I'm concerned, I'm there to, to deal with him. Mr. Ahmadi, that in your lecture you said that Paul is the most highest and Paul has written more epistles than anybody else in Christ now to say Christ had his followers, his apostles. Paul had his epistles, which was his letters and the gospel of St. John and St. Luke and St. Peter and all those guys were just their gospels. But listen to this. I add it up together and I stick it. Here is it, Mr. Amadida, how my many books are pulled out towards the gospel of Christ. Right. The books according to Christ of his disciples yes. are 152 uh, verses and the Apostle Paul have about 95. Bro brother, sorry. According to Christ. Could I, 
I don't know what the question. Could you just put the question to him first? I, Mr. Amadita, the question is this. In your lecture, you have said that Paul have more epistles, which means letters, written than any others that were of Christ. And right. Paul has written and has done more miraculous work than Christ. Hold it, hold it. Did I say he performed more miraculous work than Christ? Did I say any such things? No. 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 Oh, right. Now, right. I, 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 look, please. No. Please leave it out, my son. Look, leave it out. Leave it out. You say, look, you and I, we are poles apart in our thinking and understanding. This language of English. Mm -hmm. You are telling me things that I never said. Sorry. That he performed more miracles than anybody else. Did I ever utter those words? Must, it was not a part of the subject. Mr. Ahmad did that. When I say miracle, I don't mean I only actually make it explanation. Sorry, there's somebody but else there who's got go to put a question. Right? Thank you. Sorry, but I just would like to justify one thing. Um, you didn't say that he reheated more epistles or wrote more epistles. But I put it down here. You said grace, the teaching of grace is Pauline, not from the others. That's what you said. Is it correct? So, and I think uh, that is, according to scripture, not correct. Because in 1 Peter, we read very clearly that Peter writes here in 1 Peter 1 verse 3, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into the living hope um, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, etc. Here very clearly in this whole passage, and I would like to encourage all the whole audience to read the letters of Peter, who was one of the closest of Jesus' followers, as well as the letters of John. And very clearly, if you take the time tonight, very clearly you will find that grace is expounded there. Grace comes through Jesus Christ by faith which you put into it. It's not just holy. Just this, just, is, this is the trouble. You see, I said any time we have a, a conflict with our Christian brethren, it's either Paul, 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 now Peter. I want to know what does Jesus say? You see, this is the problem. Is I said, look, Jesus says, I am talking about your Lord and Master, Jesus Christ. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you, you listening, brother, you can't be listening while you're turning the pages. Please. The human mind can't do two things at the same time. Jesus says, verily, verily, I say unto you, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. There's no heaven for you unless you are better than the Jew. And how can you be better than the Jew by not keeping the laws and the commandments? So now you say the law is nailed to the cross. I ask you, are you circumcised? You say, no. I'm talking about the generality of Christendom. Maybe for constriction or some other reason, sickness, you might have been circumcised. But as religiously, are you circumcised? I'm asking you, are you circumcised? I, I don't think you know, I have to answer this question. Right, you. No, the thing is, you are not circumcised. <laughs> the Christian says he is not circumcised so because he is not bound by the law. He is not bound by the law. I say, where did you get that? So, he's going to quote Corinthians and Philippians and Galatians no. and Peter and James. I say, what does your Jesus say? Jesus says, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So can't you see we are at loggerheads because I am following Jesus, the master. Whatever the master says, we say we agree, we accept. Because the master was teaching nothing other than Islam, keep the laws and the commandments, believe in God. And this is what he told a Jew very beautifully. A learned man of the Jew comes to Jesus and he says, good master, what good thing must I do to gain eternal life for Jannah, heaven? What must I do? So Jesus says, why callest thou me good? There is none good except one, that is God. He doesn't deserve to be called even good according to him. There is only one good, that is God. But, but, are you listening brother? But, if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. Salvation comes by keeping the laws and the commandments. He says, he is not of me who does not take his cross and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. I want to know whether you are following him. 
Are you? Yes. You are. You eat the pig? You eat pigs? Yes. Right. Did Jesus eat the pig? No. no. He no. destroyed 2,000 pigs. But the Christian them, they are all pig eaters now. And you say you're following him. Jesus was circumcised. Was he? You follow him? Are you circumcised? He says, no. You say you're following him. You see, you are accepting words with words. Mr. Dida, I, th I think we split hairs here. Jesus made wine. Do you drink wine? Jesus drank wine. Did you, do you drink wine? There was no law. Listen, Mr. Dida, let's the, be fair. Let's be fair. We don't split no, hairs. No, no, you, you, Look, you are to follow him. Mr. Dida, I think we must be fair here. And I think time is running out. Time and is running now, out. You have very got a very good point when you say here, for I tell you that unless your righteousness exceeds or surpasses that of the Pharisees, who were the most religious and the most sorrow people, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, who those who keep...